And here are some of the other stories that we are following to get your day started. Police brutality and racial equality protests continue across the nation and here in Northern California. This 10 days after the death of George Floyd and protests most every day. There have been protests every day this week in Chico and Redding with the new protest emerging in Orland as well. Action News now continues to track these stories of what have so far been peaceful protests locally with full police support. And new details this morning about the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery, the 25-year-old unarmed black man shot and killed in Brunswick, Georgia, while jogging. The man who recorded the video of Arbery's death, William Bryan, said he only witnessed the crime. But now, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation believes Bryan coordinated with Gregory and Travis McMichaels, the suspects accused. Investigators say the three followed Arbery in their trucks, pinned him between their vehicles before Travis shot and killed him. This morning, two Buffalo police officers are now suspended after a video captured them shoving an elderly man, and you could see him just fall to the ground there. An officer could be seen kneeling to check on the man, but then other officers appear to move on. It's not clear what the man said or what led to the incident. Buffalo's mayor says the two officers involved will face action. They have been suspended without pay. And we now know the cause of a fire burning in the remote part of the Shasta Trinity National Forest. Fire officials say lightning started the Brock Fire. It's located near Brock Mountain, north of the Pitt River. That's near the east end of Shasta Lake. At last check this morning, it was still standing at seven acres. That fire was spotted by an alert wildfire camera just after 1.30 Thursday afternoon. Information officers say because of the remote area, no structures are threatened. We'll keep an eye on this one for you. And PG&E is behind on installing devices meant to ease the severity of power shutoffs during potential wildfire events. That revelation came Thursday during testimony in a hearing of the State Senate Committee on Utilities. State utility regulators and a PG&E executive also testified, saying the utility has not yet hired and trained emergency response specialists in each county. This is the latest setback for the bankrupt utility as it tries to modernize its infrastructure, which has been blamed for causing deadly wildfires, and that includes the November 2018 campfire. Red Bluff police have arrested a man on arson charges for a fire at a gas station. The fire marshal says the suspect was caught on surveillance video setting fire to boxes on the side of the AMPM gas station on South Main Street. It happened 4.30 Wednesday morning. The marshal set a train that regularly stops at the location so engineers can take a break. Well, an engineer on board saw the fire, went inside to tell the attendant. Police arrested Miguel Copas Jr. of Corning on charges of felony arson and vandalism. And new developments in a deadly Lake Oroville boat crash from 2018. The victim's father is now asking the driver of the boat be given probation. It happened in May of 2018, and investigators say Brandon Smith was driving the boat while intoxicated and crashed, killing 27-year-old Walter Gerken. Several months ago, Smith pleaded guilty to vehicular manslaughter. During a sentencing Thursday, the victim's father asked that Smith be given probation, saying, in part, my son could have easily been the responsible party. District Attorney Mike Ramsey says Smith was given 120 days in jail and three years of felony probation.